Good morning, afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Taylor Ibana. I'm a first year biochemistry major, minoring in leadership studies from Farmington Hills, Michigan, and I'm serving as the principal investigator of this project. Hi, my name is Sanai Moore. I'm a first year pre-med psychology major from New Jersey, and I served as the co-principal investigator. Hello everyone, my name is Atay Ali. I'm a first year biology pre-med major from New Jersey and I served as the library manager. Hi, I'm Tanair Metro. I'm a first year bio pre-med major from Long Island, New York and I serve as the data manager. This is our case study of data impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic for the fall of 2021 birds of prey migration in Corpus Christi, Texas. The site located on the right is a subtropical area with more mild winters and very hot and humid summers. The Corpus Christi hawk count data displays the variation among bird sightings and the conditions for each day of the month. Our research question is, how does the variability of temperature affect the migration rate of hawks in Corpus Christi, Texas, found on hawkwatch.org in fall of 2021? We hypothesize that there will be the most variation of hawks due to the temperature and most likely during the month of October in 2021. So as far as our methods, as you can see in the bottom left hand corner of the poster, we started off by getting information from hawkout.org like Sinai said, and we saw that the volunteers and hawk watchers began their research on August 1st to November 15th. And they did it from 9 a.m. in the morning to 5 p.m. every day during those days. And so then from there, we used Microsoft Excel. And there we input many indices such as Swainson's and Jacquard's in order to come up with data that we could further analyze for our research. And then lastly, we graphed out the patterns, which you'll see later. And we um, did our graphs in regards to temperature. And yeah. And so then for our first figure, for the results section on the middle section of the poster, um, you can see that there is a scatter plot, but there is also a line of best fit that has a negative correlation. And so as temperature increases, the count decreases. And um, our p-value for this graph was also zero, which showed that it was statistically significant, but the dots on this specific figure are very scattered, so it is kind of hard to make a concise conclusion, but we are able to say that it is a negative correlation in regards to temperature and bird count in Corpus Christi, Texas. Based on uh, figure two, we are able to see the uh, species abundance comparison for each month in fall of 2021. Uh, as we sampled each month, we collected a uh, number of species that we were able to identify. And based on figure two, we were able to determine that September and October had the highest abundance. This is all mainly due to the three most abundant species in the entire fall season, being the turkey vulture, the broad-winged hawk, and the Mississippi kite. By taking those three specific um, by taking those three specific species out, we were able to show figure two A the uh, species abundance comparison per month without those three main uh, most abundant species. With this, we're able to um, still see that October is the most diverse month with uh, highs of around 1,000 to 1,500. Um, this is towering over any other month, uh, including September, August, and November, which, would, which highs have never met uh, 1,000. And with this, we were able to determine that October was the most varied, uh, followed by September. Moving on from what Tanae said, I'm going to talk about figure three, which is the species accumulation fall 2021 sampling at Corpus Christi, Texas. And as you can see from this figure here, the accumulation curve shows an upward trend that gradually becomes shallow. And the shallowness starts at approximately day 48. And then corresponding with that, you can see that um, it moves on to late September. And most of the time, that's where the species were introduced and migrating. As for figure four, we have a line graph of total daily abundance of birds of prey. And it shows a high peak in the beginning of October with around 60,000 hawks. And it slowly decreases towards the middle of October and then picks back up towards the end. 
Um, its highest peak was 60,000 hawks, and its most sighted was the swallow-tailed kite, um, with its nearest spike around day 50 to 10. Based on the uh, data we were able to identify, we could come up with the uh, results that, or the conclusions that, um, based on figure three, as Taya mentioned, um, day 48 was the uh, point in time in which most species were observed, or uh, most species were introduced to the researchers. Uh, with this in mind, this correlated to like mid to late September, and it showed that like from August to mid to late September was the uh, span of time in which most species were introduced to um, the observers and into Corpus Christi. As it is a uh, funnel, as it is a funnel town, it is uh, obvious that like all the other uh, species would be moving down from other areas of the world, like Philadelphia, Florida, and all them to try to avoid the Gulf of Mexico. And by showing that, it shows that all the species are able to come down around that point. Um, in regards to figures two and two A, we were able to identify there was like a widespread uh, variation in species, but more specifically in October. And the uh, highest sightings also being in October and September. And finally, based on figure one, we were able to uh, determine that the widespread variation uh, due to temperature was a very fluctuated um, variation as there was not a huge correlation between temperature and counts. Expanding off of what Tanae said, um, October species richness and abundance definitely differed from the other months. Um, as you can see, there was always an increase and decrease throughout each graph and there was no steady um, consistency of the points um, within the figures. Adding on to what Sanai just mentioned, um, there was a spike in birds of prey species in the fall season. And um, with this spike, um, it, expect, it affects the variability and temperature migration, which is basically what our whole poster was on. And there were peaks in October before changes in the weather. And more human observations were made off of weather change, which means that like um, there were more people observing, observing these birds. And then finally, if we were to redo this experiment or to make critiques upon ourselves, we would definitely use data over a longer span of time, perhaps like 50 years, just so that we could confirm that October actually did have the highest abundance and not that this year was an outlier and anything like that, but also to expand on whether temperature actually does have an impact on birds of prey migration. And then to just close it, we'd like to acknowledge Dr. Sean T. Dash, and we'd also like to acknowledge hotcount.org and the National Science Foundation for giving us a, a grant to perform this project. So yes, thank you.